Our processed honey is sold to a large honey packer in the Midwest, and they use it for all kinds of things like Honey Nut Cheerios and Nutri-Grain bars. And Jonathan Nixon and his wife Jessica are owners of Nixon's Fresh Honey. The bee industry in Georgia is pretty significant. He says it started in the 1920s, where Georgia beekeepers would primarily raise bees and sell them up north for early pollination of their crops because the warmer climate in Georgia allows for more bee production. There's your queen. They start with a queen and a nucleus colony, or nuke for short. Beekeeping season usually begins at the beginning of March. And if your nukes build up enough, you could potentially have honey by June of that same year. People think that bees are native to the United States, but they're not. They're actually a, you know, a managed livestock that was brought over from, from Europe. The colonists brought them to America to provide a sweetener and a wax as a light source in the form of candles. These are your wax cappings here, and that's what we melt down for um, beeswax. Today, we use them primarily for ag food production. We use them to pollinate, you know, watermelons and blueberries and squash and things like that. And these Georgia bees travel too, all the way to the West Coast. We ship about a semi and a half to California for almond pollination. It usually takes them about three days to get there, and then they're unloaded and set out in the fields for about a month, and then the whole process goes in reverse and they get brought back to us. She says about 90% of the nation's bees go out to California to pollinate the almond trees. California couldn't do the amount of almond production that they do without the help from the other states beekeepers and from Georgia beekeepers. And when they return from their California adventure, they go straight into pollinating watermelons. In order to get seedless watermelons, you have to have really good cross-pollination with seeded watermelons. That pollination rate is usually about one and a half hives per acre. And here's a helpful tip. If it's cloudy or rainy outside, steer clear of the hive. So when it's rainy, they're not flying. So all of the bees are in the box and they don't have a job to do. So they're not gonna be very happy and you're gonna learn very quickly that it's better to just leave them alone. But if you do get stung, don't blame these little guys. The drones or the male bees don't sting. So how do the Nixons avoid being stung while extracting honey? We use smoke. Smoke masks their pheromones um, a little bit and kind of distracts them from what you're doing. And once they get the honey, they bring it in here. So this is the honey house. As the honey runs through the line here, pretty much it's uncapped with this machine. All the frames get loaded into the centrifuge, the extractor. It'll dump into the big tank on the floor and the pipe picks it up, the pump, and pumps it into the drums. Once the drums are full, we let them sit 24, 48 hours for all the wax particles to come to the top and then all that skimmed off. We all know honey is sold by weight, but do you know what else to look for when shopping for honey? The pure honey is honey that has not been cut with any other substance. Some of the honey that you see in the store could be honey that has been cut with corn syrup. Honey from local beekeepers is usually 100% pure. She says you also don't want your honey to be overheated because it kills all the natural enzymes. Local honey refers to honey produced by bees with nectar sources between 60 and 100 miles to where you live. So the flowers and allergens in your area would be present in the local honey you purchase. And therefore, local wildflower honey is ideal for seasonal allergies. You're kind of microdosing yourself with pollen particles. The science behind it is that your body should get uh, more used to those pollen particles and not react so poorly the next time that you encounter them in your environment. It's also good as a sugar substitute. The Tupelo honey is lower on the glycemic index, so if, uh, if someone who's diabetic wants to use honey, Tupelo would be a better option for them than the wildflower honey. So remember, look for pure, raw, local, unfiltered honey the next time you're on the hunt for this golden sweetener.